So there's never been a better time to get into Windows Gaming on the Apple Silicon Mac as we now have the next full release of Game Porting Toolkit. Yes, that's right, version 2.0 is now officially out of beta and bundled within it is the official release of D3D Metal 2.0, the amazing Windows graphics translation layer allowing all of these Windows games to work on a Mac. And this new version has opened up new compatibility for games previously unplayable on Mac like God of War Ragnarok and titles like Star Wars Squadrons. And not only that, we also have a big update to crossover with version 24.0.6 just coming out with fixes including an update for Battle.net which was broken in a recent update and it also brings one of the biggest sales of the year at 30% off. So in this video today I'll be looking at what kind of improvements have been made and which games are now compatible on Mac as well as how to upgrade crossover to take advantage of the full release of D3D Metal 2.0 and how to get Windows gaming working as well as possible on Apple Silicon hardware. So the first thing to say is that we do have a very time limited 30% off sale, which is probably the second largest sale of the year outside of Black Friday. So if you missed out on that sale, then this is the perfect time to buy in. Just click the link at the top of the video description to take advantage. However, if you are watching this after January 24th, then make sure to use the second link on the screen or the coupon code Apple Gaming Wiki New for my evergreen 20% off discount. Every purchase helps to support this channel and the content that I create. So the first thing to note is that if you want to take advantage of D3 Metal 2.0, then you might want to wait until the next version of CX Patcher releases, which will allow you to patch this straight into crossover as it's not included in 24.0.6. Alternatively, if you want to patch in D3D Metal 2.0 into any version of crossover, including crossover preview, then you can also do it manually. All you've got to do is to download Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 from the Apple website, and then make sure that we mount the evaluation environment for Windows Games 2.0. Once this DMG is mounted, what we're gonna do is to make a modification to Crossover. Just be aware that any modifications to Crossover come at your own risk. Please do not bother Codeweaver support if you can't get this to work yourself. So here I've got Crossover Preview. What I'd like to do is to duplicate this so that I have a backup and I'm gonna rename this GPTK 2.0. And then we control click on this new copy and then show package contents and then go into shared support crossover and then lib64. Within the Apple GPTK folder, we're gonna expand this and then we need to copy some files and override them here. And then within the mounted evaluation environment, we're gonna find the subfolders for the redist lib external folders. And then we're gonna drag and drop or copy and paste the files over the external folder of our crossover app. And basically we can replace all of the files within it. So go ahead and overwrite all of these. And now we're ready to go. So now you can do a standard Steam setup. Here I'm testing out Counter-Strike 2 and I have the Metal Hud turned on. If you don't know how to do this, then make sure to click on the link in the description. You'll be able to tell that the upgrade has worked because it now says V2.0 instead of V2.0B3, which means that the upgrade has been successful. Now Counter-Strike 2 is working pretty well. Some people have reported that they're getting better frame rates and frame timing. However, I couldn't actually see this myself and it hasn't made me any better at the game. Unfortunately, Apple have yet again neglected to give us any kind of change log. So we have to kind of figure out what improvements have been made for ourselves. So here we're looking at the Windows version of Cyberpunk 2077. And of course we are getting a native version on the Mac very soon, but for now it remains a very useful benchmark for Windows gaming on the Mac. And here what I've done is I have run the benchmark both using the D3D Metal 2.0 Beta 3 and D3D Metal 2.0 full release side by side. And to be honest, you can't really see much of a difference in the frame rate for this benchmark. Benchmark. It does look like 2.0 does eke out just ahead, but this is easily within the margin of error. And here the results show that there is virtually no difference. And the reality is that the full release of D3D Metal 2.0 has improvements in other areas, not just performance. And here we have one of the most exciting additions to games that are now playable on Apple Silicon and Macs, and this is God of War Ragnarok. So compatibility for this game was discovered by a user called Matras, who posted this on the Mac Gaming subreddit. And what they did was use an AVX patch from Nexus Mod, and by opening this game using the latest version of Crossover Preview with D3D Metal 2.0 full release, it was discovered that this game is actually very playable on Apple Silicon hardware. Here we're running at 1440p at the medium graphics preset and we have FSR 3.1 set to balanced mode. And if you want to get the best frame rates possible, just set the quality to low and FSR to ultra performance. We're easily able to hit over 100 FPS and the game doesn't look too bad at all at this setting. 
So one thing you'll notice is that this is quite intensive on RAM, so you need at least 24 gigabytes in order to run this properly. Also, if you try to turn on settings like frame generation, this will crash the game. But most egregiously, there's an issue with the audio using this method. However, thankfully, there is a fix. So a new patch was developed by our friend Vladimir Prog from Mac Gaming Patches. This F16C patch can be downloaded from the PC Gaming Wiki website. Just make sure to follow the instructions. And whilst you're at it, I'll also recommend subscribing to Vladimir Prog's YouTube channel and make sure to show support for modders like this who make Mac gaming possible. So I'll leave a link to Vladimir Prog's new patch which is built from the ground up as well as their YouTube channel. His video also shows the various differences between his patch and then the one from Nexus Mod by modder called 3DM. Vladimir Prog's patch basically makes God of War Ragnarok run virtually flawlessly on Apple Silicon hardware. And other games have now been made compatible too, including Star Wars Squadrons. So unfortunately this game does use easy anti-cheats so you won't be able to play the multiplayer online version. However, despite any error messages, you can actually play the single player campaign. And this doesn't run too badly on my M4 Pro. Here we're getting over 130 FPS at 1440p at medium graphics settings. Here in this combat section, we're getting about 80 to 90 FPS, which isn't too bad. And it's especially cool to see that this game is now playable, albeit only the single player campaign. And it's really cool to see that other AAA games, especially recently released ones like Dynasty Warrior Origins, here are playing the game at 1440p at high settings using the new D3D Metal 2.0. On my M4 Pro Mac Mini, we're hitting about 40 to 55 FPS. Really impressive considering that this is a very recently released game. There are literally hundreds of enemy characters on screen at once. And the frame rates are surprisingly good and playable. So some people have reported that there are issues with the in-game cutscenes, but I haven't had this problem myself. Anyway, let me know if you managed to get this game running on your Mac. And in addition to these new games, we also have the usual suspects all working properly on D2D Metal 2.0. This includes titles like Marvel Rivals, which only work on crossover preview at the moment. I also tested out games like Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which seems to work fantastically at 1440p default settings with FSR 3 set to performance mode. Also, some users have reported that Sekiro Shadows Die Twice runs better using D3D Metal 2.0. I haven't tested this against the previous beta, but it seems to be running fine at 1440p at max settings. However, this never stopped me getting annihilated in the game, which I'm absolutely terrible at. I also tested out Black Myth Wukong. And yes, I've been testing this for quite a long time and I managed to get my very first kill of this particular boss, which I've probably been trying more than 20 or 30 times at this stage, but we finally managed to get there, performing better than ever on D3D Metal 2.0. So anyway, that is my overview of Game Porting Toolkit and D2D Metal 2.0, as well as Crossover Preview and the newest version of Crossover 24.0.6. And I am expecting news about the next release of Crossover very soon, especially because the mainline release of Wine 10.0 has now fully released as well. And so Crossover 25 is definitely going to come out soon and it'll definitely include all of the latest fixes from Crossover Preview, these Battle.net fixes, as well as the latest version of D3D Metal 2.0 featured here. And thankfully, the future of Windows Gaming on the Mac is looking brighter than ever as more and more games become compatible. Anyway, if you discover any new games working on D3D Metal 2.0, then make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.